<laughs> and God is going to help us in Jesus' name. So uh, you can see how Brasavi say amen. Cultivate the habit of saying amen. That's me, Jesus answered prayer. Wow. Jesus stamped it. So do not mind that, oh, uh, this person is, this is it. Just invite them to the house of the Lord. Bring them. Make sure you do your own part. The same thing in our offering. I've been telling us where your treasure is, that's where your mind will be. Do not think that whatever you bring to the house of the Lord is more. Cultivate the habit and make sure you are faithful. Make sure you are truthful. Learn about 10% of your income. When you are faithful to God, God will be faithful to us. And you can see, despite that, the way we are in this church, you can see how God has been faithful to us. There is nothing we don't have. There is nothing God has not blessed us with. So let us always continue to do what we can do to raise the church up. And by the power and the blood of Jesus Christ, God is going to reward us abundantly in Jesus' name. Our efforts will not be in vain in Jesus' name. And no one among us will miss heaven in Jesus' name. Let's raise our tithe and offering. In Jesus' name we pray. In Jesus' name we pray. Our mighty Father, we glorify your name. We thank you, Lord, because of what you are doing for us and what you will still continue to do. Out of what you are giving to us, we bring this token, O oh Lord, let it be accepted before you in Jesus' name. And let your name be glorified. Father, we have prayed, we have talked to us that we need to bring people to the house of the Lord. That's when we contribute our own time. I pray by the power and the blood of Jesus Christ, when we go to the churches, I mean, when we go to our home, when we go to the market, when we are talking with the people, when we are before our workers, when we go to the club, we will be able to invite more people and give them trust in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord, because you are the Lord that answer prayer. In Jesus' name we pray. Let's put our offering into the bag. Make sure you close your eyes. You don't need to see what other people are doing. You are doing it for God. You are not doing it for human being. And God is God, God that sees us in darkness will surely reward us openly. Let us be serious to things of God, and God will be serious about us. Let's share the grace together. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us now and forevermore. Amen. Surely. Goodness and mercy shall follow us all the days of our life, and we shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Thank you. God bless you. I see you tomorrow. Invite as many people as possible. God bless you. Take your program. Take your program. Take your But Lord, you will stir us up so that that which you want us to receive tonight, oh Lord, as our Father in the Lord has told us, Lord, we pray that every one of us will stay awake to receive the vision in Jesus' name. As we want to exalt our name in our choruses now, we pray that you accept our places in Jesus' name. And as we worship you, Lord, the wall of Jericho will fall flat before us in Jesus' name. And more of your blessings, Lord, you bestow on us in Jesus' name. We thank you, Father, because you've answered our prayers. For we've asked and prayed in Jesus' name.
Amen. Come bless the Lord, O ye servants of the Lord, who stand by night in the house of the Lord. Lift up your hands in the holy place and bless the Lord and bless the Lord. Come bless the Lord. O ye servants of the Lord, who stands by night in the house of the Lord, lift up your hands in the Glory, honor, power, and majesty be unto Christ our Lord. Glory, hallelujah. Power and majesty be unto Christ our Lord. Glory, hallelujah. poured upon his head and that flows through to his garment is the unity that is made or composed in heaven. It's unity compounded from heaven as the Father art in me and I and the Father that they may have that kind of heavenly unity and that kind of unique unity. That's what the Lord is talking about. We're coming to Leviticus. Leviticus chapter 10 I'm reading from verse 8, Leviticus chapter 10, and we're reading from verse 8. In Leviticus chapter 10, verse 8, it tells us about this uh, uh, Aaron's, uh, Aaron's uh, anointing and Aaron's ointment that was poured upon him and his office and his calling, very, very unique. Leviticus chapter 10, verse 8. And the Lord spake unto Aaron, saying, Do not drink wine, that anointing comes upon you, and you are selected, you are chosen, you are set apart, and the anointing is unique, and you are not to be like other people in the land. It says, Do not drink wine, nor strong drink thou, not thy sons with thee, when ye go into the tabernacle of the congregation lest she die it shall be a statute forever throughout your generations and that ye may put a difference between the holy and unholy between clean and unclean that she may teach the children of israel 
that she may teach the children of Israel. You have a special calling. You have a unique calling. And you have a special anointing and a unique consecration so that you'll teach the children of Israel all the statutes which the Lord has spoken unto them by the hand of Moses. It tells us in Leviticus chapter 24. Leviticus chapter 24, and I read from verse 1. Leviticus chapter 24, verse 1. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Command the children of Israel that they bring unto thee pure oil only, beating for the light, to cause the lambs to burn continually. In this part of the reason you have the oil that was compounded, that was composed, that was made, that they'll put in the light and the lamps in the tabernacle, and it will burn continually. And it says, without the veil of the testimony, this verse 3, and in the tabernacle of the congregation shall Aaron order it from the evening unto the morning. This was special, unique assignment for Aaron. And then it says, before the Lord continually, it shall be a statute forever in your generations. He shall order the lambs upon the pure candlestick before the Lord continually. Remember, the Lord is talking to somebody above the age of 80. Might be in his 90s until he came to 100, until he was 110. He died at the age of 100, 123 years. And continually, until the point of his death, he will wake up in the night, he will do this. That's why the anointing came upon him. And it was unique. And if it was like that, that's what the Lord is telling us, that the unity he is talking about is like Aaron's ointment that flows all through his body and flows through the body of Christ and flows through the whole congregation. And it is not something temporary. It's not something that will terminate at a particular time. It's not something that is seasonal, rainy season or dry season or happy season or sad season. Everything must go on all throughout the time. And I pray the Lord will grant us this understanding of the uniqueness of excelling leadership in Jesus' name. Did I hear a good, good amen? amen. We're coming back now to Psalm 133. It says, Behold, it says, Wait and see. It says, don't be in a hurry. You might see something, but you don't behold it. You don't gaze at it. You don't think of it. You don't meditate on it. It says, behold this one. How good and how pleasant it is for the brethren to dwell together in unity. This unity is like the precious ointment. Special, unique composed from heaven and composed in a special way and should not be applied to any day-to-day -day use and should not be allowed to be touched or used by any other person. This one is special, precious ointment, very unique upon the head that ran down upon the beard, even Aaron's beard that went down to the skirts of his garment. And that made him to be set apart and to be recognized and known that here is a special, special ministry. And the unity is talking about is special. And it is not something that in your natural effort, in your natural ability, you make that unity to come. It's something that heaven has to give us. It's something that heaven has to operate on us. And then you want that unity to be like that ointment that goes on ever and ever and ever. Now, he gives us another illustration. We're looking at uh, point number three now. And we're looking at verse three. As the dew of Hammon. You see, talking about the unity. 
and it's illustrating that unity now with something we'll say natural is coming out of the temple it's coming out of the tabernacle it's coming away from Aaron and it's coming now to the field it's coming out to the illustration of nature and it says as the dew of Hermon and as the dew that descended upon the mountains of Zion for there the Lord commanded the blessing even life forevermore even eternal life the perpetual usefulness unto eternal life the dew is peculiarly useful useful perpetually and useful all the time and look at the connection of the dew and the blessing i'm reading from genesis chapter 27 genesis chapter 27 and i'm reading from verse 28 genesis chapter 27 reading from verse 28 therefore god give thee of the dew of heaven look at that God give thee of the dew of heaven. I thought the dew is falling for everybody. And God doesn't have to give somebody specially. This one is unique. And this one is special. And this one is peculiar. This one is talking about a special blessing you know, that will come upon Jacob. And he compares that to the dew that comes from heaven, not from the earth. It says, therefore, God give thee of the dew of heaven and of the fatness of the earth and plenty of corn and wine. Let the people serve thee. Just talking about the dew of heaven. And it illustrates the blessing you know, on the farm, the blessing on the field, the blessing on the family, and the blessing on the flock, and the blessing on anything he sets his hands unto. The people serve thee, and nations bow down to thee. That's part of the blessing of the deal that Jacob was bringing upon, that uh, Isaac was bringing upon Jacob. Be Lord over thy brethren, and let thy mother's sons bow down to thee. Look at this. Look at the deal now. Cause it be everyone that causes thee. Are you hear your amen? amen? And blessed be he that blessed thee. Amen. That's the deal he was talking about when he said, deal from heaven it says i'm transferring the blessing of abraham upon you upon your life upon your family upon your posterity and it refers to that as the deal of heaven and it says is the unity that is talking about that is like that deal from heaven that confers upon us the blessing of the Lord and the blessings of Abraham. Everything he has said concerning us, it says it's emanating, it's originating from that unity that it brings into our lives. We're coming to Exodus, and I'm reading from chapter 16. Exodus chapter 16, like the deal from heaven. Exodus chapter 16, I'm reading here from verse 13. Exodus chapter 16, reading from verse 13. And it came to pass that at the evening, the quails came up and covered the camp. And in the morning, the dew lay round about the host. The dew, the dew. The dew that falls from heaven. And then it goes on to say in verse 14, And when the dew that lay was come up, behold, upon the face of the wilderness, there lay a small round thing, as small as the frost on the ground. And when the children of Israel saw it, they said one to another, it is manna, for the wist not, they knew not what it was. And Moses said unto them, This is the bread which the Lord has given you to eat. What is so was deal? The deal came and uh, like forerunners of the manna. And as the deal lifted, they saw the manna. And he said, what is this? And he said, we don't know the name. What name are we going to give to this? This was manna. 
provision from heaven. And so when it says this unity is like the dew from heaven, it's like the blessing of Abraham coming upon uh, Jacob. It is like the manna that came upon the children of Israel. It's talking about Jesus Christ who is the bread of life and is giving to us and the dew that comes, the more united we are, the more together we are, and the more we are in fellowship, the more the power of Christ, the sustenance of Christ, the provision of Christ will be in our midst because how good and how pleasant it is for the brethren to dwell together in unity. That unity is like the ointment porch upon Aaron. That unity is like the deal that came upon Hammon, that came upon the hills and the mountains of Zion. It is like the manna that came up for them and that manna was there for 40 years and the Lord fed them. Deuteronomy chapter 32 and I'm reading from verse 2. Deuteronomy chapter 32. We're reading from verse 2. In Deuteronomy chapter 32 verse 2 telling us what deal came to them. It says in Deuteronomy chapter 32 verse 2, my doctrine shall drop as the deal. My doctrine shall drop as the rain, and my speech shall distill as the dew, as the small rain upon the tender herb, and as the showers upon the grass. When it says the dew, is talking about the doctrine as well. The word, the speech that comes from the mouth of the Lord that refreshes us that renews us, that revitalizes us. It says, when before the dew comes, you know, every place is dusty. And all those plants are like uh, drying up. But then at night, the dew falls on them. And by the time you wake up in the morning, that's refreshing. And it says, the unity is like that. Where there's been disagreement, commotion, uh, whatever it is, a uh, conflict, and, uh, you know, we're drying up, and our prayers are not being answered and uh, many many bad things are happening all of a sudden we realize what has been happening and we say it must stop and every negative thing will stop in our families in our church say good amen, amen. and then we say we understand now we clear all our conflicts and all our differences and then we unite together even the people of the world are noticing they say look at the people how pleasant how good it is for them to dwell together in unity and the dew of blessing will not begin to fall upon us and then they'll be refreshing you're refreshed all the dryness and the coldness and the tiredness i cannot i cannot all of a sudden we don't know it happened everything vanishes we we come alive i said we come alive because there is a refreshing there is a revival there is a revitalization there is regeneration there's renewal and the power of god comes upon us in an unprecedented way it will happen even from tonight in jesus name Deuteronomy chapter 33, I'm reading from verse 13. Deuteronomy chapter 33, verse 13, it says, And of Joseph, he says, Blessed be the Lord, uh, be his, his land, and uh, the, for the precious things of heaven, and for the dew, and for the deep that couches beneath. Is uh, bringing blessing. Jacob is said uh, now blessing uh, Joseph, and he remembered how Isaac his father had blessed him, and how he had prospered. How things have you know gone uh, very well for him because of the deal of heaven, and he loved Joseph. He was not going to bring blessing upon Joseph, and he said of Joseph, he said, "Blessed uh, of the Lord." be his hand for the precious things of heaven and for the deep that uh, couches beneath and for the precious fruits br brought forth by the sun and the precious things put forth by the moon and the and, and the chief things of the ancient mountains and for the precious things of lasting hills the precious things of the Lord come upon your life in Jesus name and then look at verse 28 verse 28 of that same chapter and it says Israel shall 
dwell in safety alone. I'm talking about you there, you will dwell in safety alone. The fountain of Jacob shall be upon the land of corn and wine. Also, his heaven shall drop down dew. Your heaven shall drop down dew. Happy art thou, O Israel, who is like unto thee, O people saved by the Lord, the shield of thy help. Who is the sword of his excellency? Thine enemies shall be found liars unto thee. And thou shalt tread upon their high places. The dew of heaven will be upon every life, upon every family. All the weariness will vanish away. Tiredness will vanish away. Curse from the enemy will vanish away. Isaiah chapter 55, and I'm reading from verse 10. Isaiah chapter 55, verse 10. For the rain cometh down, and the snow from heaven, and returneth not thither, but watereth the earth, and maketh it bring forth and birch that it may give seed to the sower and bread to the eater, so shall my word be that goeth forth out of my mouth. It shall not return unto me void, but it shall accomplish that which I please, and it shall prosper in the sin whereunto I send it. Like the rain that comes down, like the dew that comes down, the Lord will bring showers of blessing upon you. Hosea chapter 14, reading from verse 5. Hosea chapter 14, verse 5, and I will be. This is the Almighty now talking. It's going beyond just blessing upon us. Is going beyond manna, provision for the people. Is going beyond even the blessing of Abraham. He said, he himself, I will be as the deal unto Israel. And he shall grow as the lily and cast forth its roots as Lebanon. Your branches shall spread. Your beauty shall be as the olive tree, and your smell as Lebanon. They that dwell under your shadow will return. They shall revive as the corn, and grow as the vine. The saints thereof shall be as the wine of Lebanon. Ephraim shall say, and you will say, what have I to do anymore with idols? I have heard him and observed him, I am like a green fir tree. He says, from me is thy fruit found. From God is your fruit found. As the dew comes upon you, you are going to be fruitful. Who is wise? And he shall understand these things, prudent. And he shall know them, for the ways of the Lord are right. And the just shall walk in them. But the transgressors shall fall therein. You will not be a transgressor. The blessings of the Lord will abide upon your life, upon your family. Like the dew from heaven, it will abide upon the work of your hand in Jesus' name. And now in Isaiah chapter 58. Isaiah chapter 58, I read from verse 10. And if thou draw thy soul to the hungry, and satisfy the afflicted soul, then shall thy light rise in obscurity, and thy darkness be as a noon day. Any amen there? Yeah. And the Lord shall guide thee continually, yeah. and satisfy thy soul in drought, and make fat thy bones, and thou shalt be as a watered 
garden like a spring of water whose waters fail not. And they that be of thee shall build the old waste places. Thou shalt raise up the foundation of many generations. Thou shalt be called the repairer of the bridge, the restorer of paths to dwell in. Restoration in your life, repairing in your life, renewal in your life, refreshing in your life. And it comes as we become united together. You are going to see from today greater blessings, richer blessings, untold blessings, even unexpected blessings on every scene around you, spiritually and physically and in your family, everywhere. In Jesus' name, you will be a wonder to behold. Behold how good and how pleasant it is for the brethren to dwell together in unity. It is like the precious ointment upon the head that ran down upon the beard, even Aaron's beard, and went down to the skirts of Aaron. And as the dew of Hammon, and as the dew that descended upon the mountains of Zion, for there the Lord commanded the blessing, even life forevermore. The blessings be commanded upon you. I said, the blessings be commanded upon you. Heaven's blessing commanded upon you. And from tonight, you'll experience all the answers of the prayers of the past in Jesus' name. Rise up and receive before you go. Rise up and tell the Lord, the blessings of the Lord are commanded upon you. If there's any area where you are not united with the people of God, where you are not united with, you know, some because of this, because of that, don't let us cheat ourselves of our blessings. Get rid of those things and remove all those things from your life and be united with the people of God in doctrine, in teaching, in lifestyle, in saying the same thing you know, and walking the walk of God together unitedly. And special blessings are coming upon every one of us from tonight in Jesus' name. Open your mouths and talk to the Lord in prayer. Praise the Lord. Are you there? I said, Praise the Lord. I welcome everyone to our worship service today. The first at Bagada for a number of months. And I pray that today the Lord will enrich your life and the blessing of gathering together. The Lord will grant everyone in Jesus' name. You take the blessings of God home and the presence of the Lord will enrich every life in Jesus' name. Let's pray together. Father, we thank you for this hour. Thank you, Lord, for your goodness. Thank you for bringing us together. Thank you because the pandemic is getting over and we're saying and announcing that you'll brush it off and wipe it away from our land and from the world in Jesus' name. And we're praying that anything your people have lost all through this period, you will replenish and fill our lives with your glory and with your blessings in Jesus' name. Do good in every life. I pray, Lord, as your word comes for today, the power in your word and the refreshing in your word will come to everyone today.